Cuphead is really a game based around its bosses. From the root pack to the devil, 90% of the time spent on this game is facing boss characters. But not all bosses are built the same. Some are intentionally easier than others, and some are surprisingly difficult. With the delicious last course having just released, a whole new slew of bosses have arrived. But which of those bosses are easy as pie, and which are the most difficult of the bunch? I'm Caleb with 1UP Binge, and this is Cuphead Bosses Easiest to Hardest. Now, a couple of things that are necessary before we continue on. Firstly, spoilers for the DLC, but that's a given. Secondly, unlike a weakest to powerful, these are much more subjective even if our opinions may align with others. Also, we won't be taking canonical power feats into account. We're exclusively taking gameplay as our basis, and that's what really separates this from our original weak to powerful videos. A character could rend time and space but have one tack that you just jump to avoid. Thirdly, the group bosses will be ranked together as such since that's how they were intended to be faced. Fourthly, we won't be bringing up secret phases simply because they aren't necessary to complete the boss. Finally, we will only be ranking the regular mode versions of the bosses as both simple and expert modes make drastic changes that we won't be considering. On a similar note, we will only be talking about beating the bosses, not S-ranking them, as that changes things up. But with all of our rules and such out of the way, we can finally get to the meat and potatoes. This is the easiest to hardest. The easiest boss is by far the root pack. This was by design because the root pack is one of two bosses you can face as soon as you boot up the game. As such, they prove to be a tutorial boss and are designed to be immensely easy. The boss features three phases, which is similar to most of the bosses in the game, and each of them are exceedingly easy. The first phase is just correctly timed jumps and a parry at the end. The parry is not necessary, but it helps because it leaves you able to move back to a safe area for the next barrage. The pea shooter, chaser, and charge shot are perfect for this phase. The second phase, Ollie, drops a variety of what seems like randomly generated tiers on top of you with a few being parryable. We'd recommend either spread or converge for this phase, although the pea shooter works just fine with it. The final phase is the hardest and is the first to feature a variety of attacks. Although he only uses two, it's more than the others. He fires off homing carrot attacks and side beams, none of which is able to be parried. Spread, chaser, and and Crackshot are perfect for this phase, especially if you need to constantly move with Horus. While there's a lot to talk about, this boss is exceedingly easy and that's by design, hence his placement. About a step above the previous, Goopy Le Grande is next on our list. Goopy is the other boss you gain immediate access to, but he is much more difficult than the root pack. Goopy continually bounces around the screen, and each of the bounces can be generally random, whether he bounces high or low, and how the trajectory affects the wall bounces. He will also at random throw a punch directly forward you either need to avoid or duck under. In his second phase, it's mostly the same, but the bounces are less and he is much bigger, making it harder to avoid. Surprisingly, his final phase is the easiest due to it only really having one attack, slamming directly downwards, in which it's heavily telegraphed and quite easy to dodge. So he definitely ranks here on our list. Up next on our list is Werner Wormen. Werner is a boss in Inkwell Isle 3, the final stand in between you and the devil, and he's usually one of the final bosses you face off against. However, he's one of the weaker bosses you face off against. This is due to his attacks, most of which are easy to dodge and avoid. He literally gives you the object you need to dodge his charge. Or if you play as Miss Chalice, your invincible role makes his charge utterly useless. Each of his projectiles are quite slow and easy to deal with, and even with his flamethrowers in his second phase, he's supremely easy to deal with considering you have two floors to go between, and the bottle cap buzzsaws aren't really a threat. Even in his third phase with the Cotton Wagon, most of his attacks are heavily telegraphed and relatively easy to dodge, making this Isle 3 boss quite easy to deal with. Jumping back to Isle 1 for the moment, Cagney Carnation ranks next on our list. 
Cagney is typically the final boss of Isle 1 since he is unlocked after Rebian croaks, and he doesn't take that spot lightly. Most of the battle takes place on three floating platforms that you have to jump between, and in the second phase, you can only really use two of them. In his two phases, he has a variety of moves, such as the falling seeds that are relatively easy to dodge, and a boomerang that is extremely easy to dodge, typically speaking. The homing acorns can be trouble, but they're relatively slow and don't cause much of an issue. His second phase is really not that much harder, although he does stop you from using the ground floor and a platform most of the time. His main form of attack is spitting a projectile that is exceedingly easy to dodge, and while he can block two platforms, it's unlikely in regular mode. Running to our first DLC boss is the optional boss, Angel and Demon. Angel and Demon are a secret boss you face using the mysterious relic and are shockingly easy. Not counting the King's Leap bosses who aren't fought in a regular way or Baroness Von Bonbon because of her weird philosophy for a boss battle, Angel and Demon have the second lowest health in the game at 800, right above King Dice who is also fought in a very different way. The Demon always faces the player while the Angel always stays behind them, acting very much as the prototypical Angel and devil on their shoulders. Because of this, turning around shifts them and changes their attacks. Each devil attack can be shifted into a harmless devil attack by turning around at the right time. Speaking of, their attacks are quite easy as well. Angel's attacks do not damage and the devil has very generic and simple attacks, including three fireballs where one can be parried or a giant wall of flame that can only be dodged by shifting sides. The only thing that's difficult is the lightning bolt cloud and that can be generally avoided just by riding on top of it. They are a very unique boss, but they are one of the simplest in the game once you understand their mechanic. The first and easiest plane boss, Hilda Berg, ranking next on our list. The plane levels, often referred to as shoot 'em up levels, tend to be quite difficult. Some consider them the most difficult in the game. This is due to the wider range of motion you have, weaker weapons, and different supers making it much more difficult to understand at first. This is even so in this fight, because when you first face it, you don't have the secondary weapon of bombs. However, the bombs make this fight a cakewalk especially in its final phase. Her first phase has plenty of attacks going across the screen that can be hard to dodge at first, but are quite easy to understand after a few attempts. Her final phase has her take up half the screen and become an immense nuisance who throws so much stuff at you, it's impossible to win on your first attempt unless you've been studying the patterns. The worst part of her phases is the RNG. She has three potential forms she can shift into, doing it twice during the battle. However, upon further inspection, it turns out she only has two possibilities during her second and fourth phases, either being Taurus, then Gemini, or Taurus, then Sagittarius. The hardest of these phases is Gemini, because although its spinning ball of doom doesn't seem hard to dodge, with everything else on this screen, it can be hard to handle. Taurus is the easiest, mostly due to it tracking you, which means it requires mostly just well-timed dodges. Hilda is the easiest plane boss, but she's definitely no cakewalk. The froggy fighters known as Ribian Croaks rank next on our list. Ribian Croaks, despite being one of the earliest fights you can take on, able to be fought right after the root pack, is the hardest boss in Isle 1. Their first phase is quite easy when you get the hang of it. Croak's fireflies are pretty easy to clear out with Spreadshot or Converge, and Ribby's flying fists are a variety of simple patterns with one random parry object in the midst. Phase 2 is pretty simple as well. Ribby shoots bouncing three ring balls while Croak's becomes a fan that pushes you if you're too close. You need to keep moving in this phase. Spread is really good for this phase, and Chaser works well if you don't mind a much longer fight. The reason they're the hardest Isle 1 boss is simple, the final phase. In this phase, they become a giant slot machine that is generally invulnerable until you hit the parry crank. 
Doing so draws a random object, each of which summons a multitude of platforms you have to deal with, whether it's hopping between them, dodging flames, or dealing with the hopping balls. Each of these can happen indefinitely depending on how much damage you do. The RNG definitely kills you in this boss, and it takes a long time to learn, but it's still not that bad in the grand scheme of things. Jumping to aisle 3 again, Captain Brinybeard ranks next on our list. Brinybeard is weird because for a vast majority of the battle, he only has one attack while everything else around the battlefield does a majority of the damage. In his first phase, he fires a multitude of mostly parryable objects until you do enough damage to push him into phase 2, in which a random sea creature comes to attack. Of these creatures, the squid is the easiest as it can be pushed away and its attacks do no damage. However, it does blind you temporarily. Spreadshot and Chaser are very good on this one due to how far above you Brinybeard is and how close this squid can be. The shark will come chomping from the left side of the screen but always stops in the same spot. The dogfishes jump from the water and try to fight you, but they can be killed pretty easily. During all of this, a barrel is above that drops down every once in a while, but a well-timed dash or Miss Chalice's dodge roll makes it immensely easy to dodge. Phase 3 features the ship itself firing cannonballs at you, but each of these are very similar to Cell's dirt balls at the beginning of the game, and only become a problem if you're not paying attention to the barrel or octopus shots. The final phase features two attacks both of which have the same solution. The fireballs can be ducked under or dodged and the laser beam can be continually parried or ducked under like the other. None of Brinybeard's attacks are terribly hard to dodge and he is actually an easy boss to deal with for the most part. Another aisle 3 boss on the list, Phantom Express ranks next. Phantom Express is usually the last level faced in Inkwell Isle 3, and as such would be the final stage before the penultimate and final bosses. Despite this, its ranking would tell you how simple it seems to be. Phantom Express is made up of four distinct phases, each one of them being intensely different from the other. However, one thing is very important, parrying. So we hope you worked up your parry skills by this point. Throughout the battle, you will need to parry the platform you're on to dodge attacks, and small pumpkins will drop bars of parryable soap that move the cart for you. In the first phase, you face off against Blind Spectre, who fire eyeballs at you that bounce and use their physics to hit you. Although you can destroy them with bullets, so we recommend spread or converge for this phase. In phase 2, you face off with a conductor who can hit you at two places at once, so you need to really pay attention to where his head is situated and navigate the little cart. Phase 3 has you face off against the lollipop ghouls, which only utilize their lightning breath to hit the middle of the screen. We really recommend converge for this phase because while while the damage is great, it seems like you could hit both of them at the same time. The final phase is the hardest and we recommend Chaser or Crack Shot for this phase. You can only commit damage if you parry the train's tail first and open up its boiler to hit. The chaser bullets will always track the heart, and while it takes longer, it is the simplest way to win this phase. While the hitboxes are intensely varied, the attacks are so simple that it's difficult to say this boss is hard. Up next on our list is Sally Stage Play. Sally is an aisle 3 boss you face quite late in the game, but that doesn't change how easy she is compared to some of the others. Sally's variety is interesting because while she has a wide variety of moves, none of them are particularly difficult to deal with. In her first phase, she has a jump into a kick that is pretty simple to deal with, a parryable kiss projectile, and a teleport drop that tracks you. The teleport is the most difficult, but even that is simple to dodge with a smoke bomb or Miss Chalice dodge roll. She can also throw fans that act as traps if they miss, but they're also quite easy to dodge. Her second phase still has her use her dropkick and fans which you've already learned to handle, alongside children throwing milk bottles from above that aren't too bad and her mouse attack. The mouse attack runs along the ground, up the wall, and on the roof where it will drop down directly on top of you. Phase 3 has completely new moves. 
each of which are heavily telegraphed and easy to deal with once you know what's coming. Destroy the meteor with spread and parry the star to avoid big wave, or utilize smoke bomb to go through it. Lightning is also actually quite easy to deal with too, because while it does bounce off the floor, it tracks your initial location and as such is easy to dodge. Phase 4 can be annoying with this spinning umbrella, but focus on dodging while using chase or crack shot and you'll get through it without a worry. Sally's variety features a lot of unique moves, but most of them are pretty easy to deal with even after one playthrough. Next up on our list is Wally Warbles. Wally is a plane boss you face off against in Inkwell Isle 2 and is quite interesting. His first phase is really simple. Both of his attacks feature a spread shot, the bullet finger being slower but definitely more imposing while the egg only breaks on contact with the edge of the screen. After doing enough damage, he'll get very angry and start shooting out feathers in a very generic and simple shoot em up pattern that's not a problem in the slightest even with the constant baby birds. His second phase is also very simple, featuring his son Willy Warbles and a variety of spiked eggs blocking shots for him. Timing shots and bombs are very important in this phase, and dodging the eggs when they expand is the most important part since the electric bullet is always able to be parried and as such is not much of a threat. His third and final phase is made super easy by the bombs and their arcs, and each of his attacks shoot directly upwards, with his trash can attack aiming towards you and his heart spreading bullets in a simple shape that comes back down. The hardest part is the pills, which can fly at you while you're trying to dodge his other attacks, but even those are simple enough once you understand they're flying directly towards you no matter where you are. Wally is a definite step up in difficulty from Hilda, but he's still not the most difficult plane level. We've still got plenty. Jumping back to the DLC, up next on our list is Esther Winchester. Esther is a really interesting boss because of how unique her attacks are. So first, we need to talk about the eagle that constantly drops dynamite on the players, which is super easy to deal with, but it does add to the clutter on the screen. In her first phase, she also shoots snake oil that hits the right side of the screen first and then flies towards the player. Or she can throw out her lasso and bring a giant cactus towards her, which can hit really quick if you're not careful. However, both of these moves are quite easy to deal with. Her second phase is a bit more difficult. Dropping safes from above in a regular pattern or sucking up all kinds of material and firing it at the player. Her third phase is weird when she becomes a sausage, but none of her attacks here really stick out as too difficult. It's really her final phase that's hard because of the constant flow of hot dogs you need to avoid. You have to fly through the gaps in the casing and still try to damage her, and since this casing never stops, you need to be extremely accurate with every movement you commit if you want to survive. Another DLC based boss, Glomstone the Giant is next up on our list. Glomstone is one of two bosses immediately available as soon as you start off Inkwell Isle 4. He is the easier of the two, simply because while his first phase is annoying because of how the pillars will randomly drop or raise with very little lead up. Most of the attacks in phase 1 are quite simple to deal with, the clouds always fly in a very similar pattern. The bear always lands at the same spot and the geese, while the raising platform can screw you over, are simple enough to dodge. Yes, the gnomes are annoying and pretty much random with very little lead up, but if you're careful they're easy to deal with too. Phase 2 is simple, however. The hiding gnomes in the beard can cause a lot of problems while you're focusing on the puppets, but the arcs of the ball are simple when you understand them. Phase 3 is confusing at first, but utilizing the cowbell and running chaser or crack shot make that phase quite simple. Just keep an eye on your platforms. We make it sound simple, but all in all it's still quite difficult because of the crazy platforms in this boss fight, since you're not always on solid ground. Jumping back to Isle 2 now, Beppy the Clown ranks next on our list. 
Bevy takes his clownery to the next level during his battle, and we highly recommend Smoke Bomb or Miss Chalice for the entirety of this fight. In his first phase, he will inch along the track either forward or back for 3 seconds before charging, which is easy to deal with using Smoke Bomb or Miss Chalice's dodge roll. Although on occasion, he does 4 charges and then shoots forward with a delay of 1.5 seconds, which can definitely catch you off guard. Above Beppy are some cardboard ducks, one of which will drop a light bulb. Shoot the ducks to neutralize them, it's very simple. His second phase is easily decimated with spread. When he turns into a balloon, his main form of attack are the dog balloons. Every once in a while, one can be parried. Watch out for the people in the carts because they can damage you as well. His third phase is simple because the attacks are based on the color of the horse. The yellow horse shoots horseshoes that fall on the player, in which you need to take advantage of the opening in the horseshoes, although trying to dodge this and the roller coaster can be immensely difficult. The green horse is different because it shoots out horseshoes in a wave pattern with potential for a parryable one. This is easier to deal with because, like others, since it chases the player, Smoke Bomb or Miss Chalice make it easy. Chaser and Crackshot make this phase easy since you can focus on dodging even if it takes longer. Phase 4 is another phase we recommend spread for because while you're jumping between platforms, Beppy is in the background which can be dealt with easily enough because his main form of attack is his penguins which are very, very easy to deal with. Sure, once again, we make this sound easier than it is, but Beppy is constantly called difficult because of how many different possible ways he can hurt you and do it quickly. Another plane based level, Kala Maria ranks next on our list. Kala is faced on IL-3 and is one of the harder plane based bosses. This is because she can only ever be damaged by shooting her in the head. Body shots don't count, and even then, her attacks can be quite annoying. Her first phase isn't too difficult, but has enough RNG to be annoying to learn. She can pull up one or two random fish to attack with in any order. One spits three waves of six wave flames, and the other shoots out an electric dolphin that tracks the player. She can also summon ghost pirates that charge at the player's location, but are relatively easy to dodge unless the sea creatures hinder it. She can also summon a variety of sea creatures. One pushes you around with no damage, the pufferfish cover most of the screen, but some can be parried, and the final one shoots bombs that explode in shrapnel in 8 directions. Phase 2 features her and her mermaid gorgon phase, but in reality, the damage is done from the bullets of the electric eels, although some can be parried and the eels can be destroyed. What really makes Kala difficult is her stone gaze, turning the player into stone where they need to mash out to survive or take damage. Phase 3 is similar, but is more accurately a maze with nearly undodgeable stone gaze. This is by far the hardest part of the boss, because you need to navigate the maze and shoot her at the same time. Kala is hard, but even then, she is outshone. The final boss of the game ranks next on our list. Up next is the Devil. The Devil is the final boss of the game and as such does provide quite a challenge for the most part. The weakest part of this fight is the first phase, with the purple demon minions. If you're not paying attention, they can cause some serious damage, but since they can be destroyed, they're not too bad. The Devil's first phase is full of erratic and interesting attacks such as the four crystal balls that fly around the arena erratically, the five fireballs that move right and left, or the six fireballs in a hexagon shape that track the player. Each of these are quick and hard to dodge, but with Smoke Bomb, they become simple enough to deal with. He can also transform, having a variety of attacks, such as the goat hand clap, which can be avoided by jumping, or the chalice dodge roll, the snake, which can be avoided by hiding in the far corner, although be wary that the purple demons can sneak up on you here, or the spider which drops from above and can be dodged with a well-timed dash. His later phases are quite easy when you pack spread since his hitbox is quite large. None of the attacks in these phases are particularly worth pointing out due mostly to them being simple to avoid. 
The worst part of Phase 2 is the poker chips you need to avoid that fall on the platforms you battle on, and you'll need to parry the bat bomb when it appears or you will likely take damage. In subsequent phases, he reduces the amount of platforms and summons minions that are simple to deal with, and his final phase is shockingly easy to deal with. The Devil is much less difficult than you would expect, but it's still not an easy fight. Jumping back to the DLC for a moment, Mortimer Freeze is next on our list. Mortimer is unlocked after beating Glumstone and is a difficult boss to deal with due to the way you fight him. While unlike Glumstone and a few other bosses, you face him on solid ground, he is a very slippery boss to hit. In his first phase, he is constantly moving, and as such, we recommend Chaser to deal with him. Or if you're confident enough, Spread and Converge can work too, although Chaser is better for consistent, if less, damage. Mortimer only has three bosses in Phase 1, and he does them at random, summoning icicles that run around and need to be shot and killed, shooting a variety of tarot cards at the player where some can be carried, and slamming down on the player with a large whale. None of these are particularly difficult, but they can be hard to deal with if you're not careful and aren't watching his setups. Phase 2 is when you go up against Snowlum. Any shot works, but it might be best to work with Converge, Pea Shooter, or Charge, so you're not too close to him. The Snowlum's attacks aren't superbly special. He has a shockwave that as far as we can tell does no damage, but instead is a distraction for the ice spikes that he summons afterwards. He can also roll to the other side of the arena and occasionally roll back and forth or bounce instead. Smoke Bomb and Chalice Roll are superbly helpful for this attack. His most varied attack is his Fridge Attack where he will shoot out ice cubes that can split into smaller cubes and popsicles that swoop at the player where some can be parried and most can be destroyed. The reason he ranks so hard on this list is because of his third phase where the battlefield completely shifts and it can catch you by surprise. You need to keep moving between revolving platforms and we highly recommend Chaser and Spread for this fight. He can shift around the battlefield, making him a very hard target to hit during the fight. His attacks are difficult as well. The Laser Eye, which fires three times, hits pretty much full screen and is pretty quick for the most part. The buckets that split into moons have three potential angles and only some of them can be parried. Finally, the Snow Cone Attack which is definitely the easiest of the attacks as it flies inward and is quite simple to dodge. Mortimer is a really interesting boss simply because of how many different things he can throw at you, hence why he is so difficult. Another DLC boss, Moonshine Mob rank next. Moonshine Mob is made up of four phases, with the majority of the time in the battle being spent on a three-layered battlefield that requires you to hop up and down between floors during the battle. The first phase features a moving boss, so Converge or Chaser is very helpful, because while you're dodging attacks, you still want to be doing damage. He can damage you by running into you and has a variety of moves. Firstly, he can kick a caterpillar across the screen. This rolled up caterpillar bounces off the ceiling and floor and is aimed at the player. He seems to persist until he is killed. The mobster can make a phone call that leads to the bug goons coming out of the background and chasing after the player until they go off screen. Cops will come out and shoot pesticide, some of which can be parried and is typically aimed at the mobster. Finally, he can also summon suspended bombs that explode shortly after making contact with them. The second phase is very simple, but also difficult, and we heavily recommend either Chaser or Crackshot to track the light bug as you focus on dodging the mighty light beams and moonshine barrels. She can also kick you if you get close enough, and the gramophone in the middle also deals damage. We highly recommend Chaser and or Crackshot for Phase 3, because the actual hitboxes are a bit weird. You need to deal with the giant anteater and be wary as his tongue you can parry. He can shoot out giant balls of cops that they've stuck together and it's very hard to dodge, and if you're not paying attention, the tongue can definitely hurt. The final phase is the simplest. Just dodge the sound waves that come out at an increasing rate as the fight goes on, some can even be parried. Moonshine Mob is very difficult despite being one of the first bosses you have access to in the DLC. 
Yes, it technically counts. Next up is the King's Leap. While this can be seen as more of a side quest or a series of mini games, they're still counted as a boss by most. This features a series of five bosses based on chess, and the only way to win is parrying. The pawns are the first and only to require a slap to the head or a dash, and they drop from the ceiling and run towards the player. And while their headless bodies can still damage you, they're no threat. Similarly, the bishop only requires a parry to the head while it's pink and the candles are out, but they're not really that bad to put out. The knight, while second, has much more up his sleeve as he can strike with his sword, charge at the player, and do a taunting move immediately into another attack. The rook requires you to parry heads back at him to damage him, and the queen requires you to parry cannons to damage her. Yes, you don't have any weapons or charms during these fights, but while the style of battle is different, none of these bosses are particularly in-depth. All of their attacks are really simple and just require you to do very simple simple techniques. Although we will say Miss Chalice is definitely a good investment for these fights. Her dodge roll, parry dash, and double jump make it amazingly easy. The final boss of the DLC, Chef Saltbaker ranks next on our list. Saltbaker, much like the devil, has a lot at his disposal, but he is definitely more difficult because his moveset is much more varied and a lot harder to deal with. Firstly, in his first phase, watch out for the flame at the top that will occasionally drop down and aim at the player. But that's not his main form of attack in that phase, as he has four main attacks in phase one. He can levitate and shoot bits of icy sugar cubes in a wave pattern, use the desert limes as boomerangs, where the high ones boomerang back low and vice versa, and he can also attack with six cookies made from the distillery dough or crush the gnome berries and cause the berries to come raining down on the players. Each of these attacks are quite difficult, but by this time you should have dealt with similar or stronger versions of these patterns, so we think this phase shouldn't be too tough. Phase 2 features pepper shakers that shoot peppercorns, some of which can be parried to deal damage to the chef. Destroying the shakers is the only way to deal damage during the phase. He can cause pineapple mint leaves to fall from the ceiling, floating side to side, but they fall slower than most projectiles, which can be a bit difficult to deal with, and a similar flame to that of phase 1 can be a constant threat if you're not careful. Phase 3 is exceedingly simple. Just avoid the salt clones with the smoke bombs or dodge rolls and keep above the saw blade while dealing damage. His final phase, phase 4, features falling glass platforms that you need to stand on top of and keep on top of, shooting his exposed heart and or parrying it to deal damage. The main issues on this battle are the sheer clutter of phase 1 and the falling glass of phase 4, but both of those are still not the worst. Running back to the base game, the penultimate boss, King Dice, ranks next. King Dice is interesting because his entire boss fight is actually 10 boss fights if you're unlucky, because you're playing a board game. Landing on any of the specific spaces leads to a smaller boss fight. We won't be going over every one, but these mini bosses are generally quite simple. So let's go over some of the more interesting ones. Pippin Dot requires constant watching of the battlefield as spikes can appear from the ground while firing attacks at you. Hopus Pocus can summon skulls around you that you need to dodge at just the right time. Fear Leap is fought as a plane and you need to avoid exploding presents and Grim Reaper riders by going below them. Perioletta forces you to parry to form the platforms you attack her from. The most interesting boss is Mr. Chimes, where you have to play the card game memory while avoiding damage and he can only be damaged after finding a correct match, which makes him very difficult and that's why he's safe for last. The final phase against King Dice requires a lot of precision, as you have to deal damage when the cards aren't spawned and then properly parry during the card phases. Although Cuphead and Mugman are better for this phase than Miss Chalice as far as we can tell due to parry jumps instead of dash. Dice by himself is not difficult, and he has the lowest health in the game if you discard Bonbon and King's Leap bosses, but counting his minions makes him a true threat. Up next on our list is the penultimate plane boss, Dejimi the Great. 
The Jimmy is a boss you face in Inkwell Isle 2 and has been said to be one of the more powerful and difficult bosses. This is due to a few reasons as we've brought up before. Many people consider the plane levels to be the hardest as is. In his first phase, Dejimi can summon up a chest that fires gems with one pariable, four shimitars that line up before shooting with one pariable, or a sarcophagi which releases four scarabs after the player. Once during this phase, he will also shoot his skull forward in a straight line. His second phase features buzzsaws you need to avoid while also trying to get passage through many pillars which are best destroyed by bombs. In his third phase, he fires ringed planets in a wave that can differ between a wide wave and a narrow wave. He will also fire mummified Jimmies that have three different animations to match their different speeds. Phase 4 features Cuphead, who will fire a barrage of bullets, one of which is parryable, while Dejimi's turban will fire 4 bullets 3 times in a row while you're also trying to avoid Cuphead. His final phase is actually simple, where you need to dodge a circle of pyramids that fire dark energy beams at you from 4 angles, while also dodging Dejimi's transparent rings. Due to having 5 phases, which is the most unique phases in the game, Dejimi is a very difficult boss. However, he doesn't rank as more difficult simply because, while he is difficult, his variety of moves are simple enough that beyond phase 2, most of his phases can be cleared quite simply after a few plays. The final DLC boss we'll be talking about, the Howling Aces, ranks next on our list. Many may be asking why they rank here, but those who have played it know that this fight is intense and very strange. Firstly, the battlefield itself is very tricky, and you'll see that's a theme in the harder bosses. During the fight, you are on Canteen Hugh's plane. While this doesn't sound too bad, you cause the plane to move by standing on the wings, causing him to turn and such. This is for every single phase, and it doesn't change at all. So we recommend Chaser or Crankshot to deal with the bosses, especially the first phase. In the first phase, you go up against the Bulldog Pilot, who needs to be damaged directly. No damage done to his plane counts. The pilot has a few moves, such as using a cat as a rocket launcher, shooting yarn balls you can dash over or duck under. He also has the ability to fire the tattoo on his arm, which flies like a boomerang coming back to him, one of them can be parried. You'll also have to deal with falling tennis balls and fire hydrant missiles later in the first phase, but aren't the main form of attack. You'll then deal with four different Yankee Yippers at once that form and fire a powerful homing attack made of the letters for Bow Wow, but this is their only form of attack and it's quite simple. The final phase is the longest and the worst to deal with, featuring a multitude of hard to deal with attacks such as lasers and flipping the whole screen. This is the only boss we know that does something like this and dropping dog balls from above. Crankshot and Chaser are super helpful in this phase and fight as a whole, although Converge can be used to great effect as well. Bagging the bronze medal of difficulty is Grim Matchstick. While the top three are sort of interchangeable, most of the internet agrees that one of these three bosses are the most difficult. Of these three, we nominate Grim as only our bronze medalist. This is because while his phases all feature the moving platforms, these ones are the simplest. They only move right to left and as such they're pretty easy for the most part, especially with Miss Chalice's double jump. His first phase in regular mode always starts with the eye ripple attack, aim directly at the player with the final ring able to be parried. The rings start with only 3, but after reaching a damage threshold, he will shoot 4. Smoke Bomb clears this up wonders or just dodging at the right time. He can also fire an arcing fireball that goes in a wave pattern and on occasion will fire a crisscross version with two of them, making it quite a threat if you're not careful. He can also try to hit the players from the bottom via use of his tail, but this has enough wind up it's not the biggest threat. Phase 2, he switches sides and opens up his mouth, letting out a line of fireballs across the bottom row. While these don't seem like much, every once in a while one will jump and this tends to catch the players off guard if they're not watching. His final phase is also just as simple. 
He will also shoot a cluster of six to nine fireballs that if destroyed will split off in a cross pattern. On occasion, he will also morph into a flamethrower and shoot two bursts down the middle set of clouds. But Grimm's hardest part is continually moving to avoid damage, and his first phase is actually the hardest. Utilizing Lobber and Chaser or Crackshot make this fight a general cakewalk, and as such, while still difficult, he is still outclassed. Snatching second, the silver medal of difficulty belongs to Rumor Honeybottoms. Rumor is another boss continually complained about online. No matter who you ask, she'll be listed as one of the hardest bosses, and for good reason. Much like Grimm, you need to be constantly moving, except this time it's up, always up. Now this isn't much of a challenge as Miss Chalice with her double jump and dashes, but with Cuphead and Mugman, it proved to be a challenge. Her first phase doesn't even include her as a boss. The security bee is the one you face off against. He drops bombs that explode after a delay and shoot out spikes, half of which can be parried. Tired worker bees also fly across the screen and can be dealt with in the typical way. Chaser and Crackshot are really good for this phase due to how much moving the security bee does. In Phase 2, Rumor Honeybottoms makes her appearance, where she will pop up on one side of the screen and start casting spells. The Tetrahedron shoots out parryable projectiles three times, or the parry orb that follows the player in a slow stalking manner. Both of these aren't too difficult, but her true difficulty comes from her other moves. She'll drop her head like a wrecking ball and shoot out six B missiles, each of which can drift and change course if necessary. Sure, she ends up following a pattern which is always B missile, tetrahedron orb, but she starts off randomly in regular mode. Her third phase is her hardest, and we recommend Lobber for this phase because she will always be below you. She starts chasing you upwards, trying to hit you from either side with a giant circular buzzsaw or her giant fist missiles, which have a wide path and can be quite the nuisance if you're not paying attention. While these are her only two attacks, they have a wide angle of attack and can be hard to dodge. Rumor doesn't rank at the bottom simply because you have access to a lot more in this fight than you do in the final spot on the list. Finally, grabbing our gold medal of difficulty is Dr. Call's robot. Now, no matter who we placed at gold, someone would have been disappointed, but after a lot of deliberation, we've landed on the robot. The robot lands is the most difficult simply due to the way you fight him in the battle. You fight in a plane which is already difficult to deal with and you don't have access to all your tools. But to deal damage, you need to decimate the three special locations he attacks from, his head, his chest, and his stomach. These areas already release attacks such as the mega laser that covers most of the screen, the parryable bot that blocks off the top and bottom of it, or the zigzagging horseshoe. But even after destroying these locations, you'll finally be doing actual damage while he uses new moves such as the junk cannon from his mouth, a magnet to pull you to a corner, twist his arms through the center of the screen, or the homing bombs. Mind you, this is all still his first phase, and you still have plenty to go, because his second phase, while shorter and much less advanced, is still annoying due to his constant movement and lack of real attacks beyond the previously mentioned homing bombs. Its third phase is a generic bullet hell and really not as difficult as the most difficult bullet hell games, but in general it's still hard trying to navigate the pillars and deal with the bullet hell. It's a much worse bullet hell than Wally Warbles and has two variants. But beyond that, its first phase is its most difficult, especially if it's your first time playing, you won't be making too much progress. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. And if you need a 1-up, hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. Thanks for watching.